Hello, welcome to week six, unit two, importing libraries. In order to use libraries in Python, you need to import them first. We will see in this unit that it's possible to import complete libraries or just certain functions from a library. In addition, we will see what namespaces are, how we can define aliases for namespaces, and how we can use these namespaces to avoid naming conflicts. So again, it's showtime. Let's jump over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how to import libraries in Python. In order to import a library in Python, I would use the import statement. For example, this line here, import maths, imports the math library. If I execute the cell, I don't see any output, but in the background, the math library has been imported. I also added a link to the documentation of the math library. You can browse through it and see what kind of functions and constants are defined in the math library. I will use a few of them later on in this unit to demonstrate how to work with libraries. So, what happened after we imported the math library? After we imported the math library, the functions and constants inside the library are available to us. However, we need to specify the fully qualified name. So we need to call these functions and constants using their namespace. In this case, the namespace is just the name of the library. So in order, for example, to call the cosine function from the math library, I would call the function using its full name, namely math, the library name, followed by a dot, followed by cosine. And the same way I can access the constant pi. Namespace math, followed by a dot, followed by pi. So this way I can calculate, for example, the cosine value of pi. And that is true basically for everything that's inside the math library. For example, to access the sine function, I would call math.sign. Let's execute this cell and we see that the cosine value of pi is minus one and the sine value of pi half is one. However, sometimes it's a little bit tedious to always write the whole library name, especially if the library not has a short name like Mars, but has a very long name. And therefore, it's possible to define an alias for the namespace. And this is exactly what's happening here. When importing the Mars library, I now define an alias for the namespace, namely M. And this enables us to afterwards access the different functions inside the math library not using the full qualified name mass dot function name, but instead just using an M. For example, M dot sine or M dot cosine. So we don't need to print out or write out the full library name anymore. Let's give this a try. I need to enter a number here, so let's enter 10 and the value of the result is one. And what is the result I calculate here? Oh, the result I'm calculating here is the Pythagorean identity. So sine x squared plus cosine x squared, and that should always result to one. So I can enter different numbers as well. Let's try 6,055, and again, the result is one. No? And you see the important part here, I can access the different functions, power function or the sine function from the mass library using their shortcut name M instead of the fully qualified name. What you should do now as well, you should pause the video and have a look at the different functions we used inside the Python documentation. For example, the power function, which is, you know, a function that calculates x to the power of y. And there's also some information when this should be used and why not. 
So I won't go into detail of all these functions, but I encourage you to pause the video and have a look around the MAS library documentation. So far, we have always imported whole libraries, but sometimes it makes sense to import just one or two functions from a library. For example, if we know that we just use the sign function and pi from the mass library, we don't need to import everything else, but instead we can just partially import this library. And this is exactly what it's done using this syntax here. From the mass library, I want to import a list of elements, in this case, just two, sign and pi. And afterwards, I can use these functions in my program code. And the important part to notice down here is that I don't need to use the fully qualified name in this case. No? I can just invoke sign and pi without specifying mass.sign or mass.py. Let's execute this and we see that the result of three times pi half the sign from this is minus one. I mentioned the term namespace before. Why are namespaces useful? So if we look at Python, we have different elements in the language. We have some keywords, something like with, for, and, and we have built-in functions. For example, print and input. This is names that are already taken by the Python language. If we now import a library, even more names get assigned. For example, if we import the sign function from the mass library, also the name sign is assigned. And that can lead to conflicts. I've written a, a pretty stupid little program here, which creates one of these conflicts. I first import the sign function from the mass library, not inside the namespace, but just inside the general namespace. And then I use it to calculate the sign from zero. Afterwards, I define a sign function myself, and this just prints a result. I don't know how to calculate the sign of something. And if I now call sign from zero again, now you will see what happens. Let's execute this. The first calculation is performed correctly. And the second calculation, we get the result from my custom sign function. And what's happening here is that basically the new function I defined here assigns the name sign to something else. So first we assigned the name sign to the sign function from the mass library. And through my definition here, it's assigned to something else. And therefore, the correct sign function from the mass library is not available to us anymore. And this is exactly one of the conflicts that can happen, especially if you import a large number of libraries and therefore namespaces are useful. We can use different namespaces to avoid exactly this conflict. And this is what I show you, what I will show you in, in the following example. Now I import the whole mass library using an alias m, and afterwards I define my new sign function, but I can still access the sign function from the mass library using the fully qualified name, including its namespace alias. And if I now execute this program, you will see I'm still able to calculate the sign from zero. So therefore, we have seen why are namespaces useful. They help us to avoid naming conflicts. What I've shown you so far are different forms of import. And now you could ask the question, when to use what? When do I use, for example, a plain import? When would I use an import with an alias defined? And when would I import, for example, just parts of a library? So that's a good question. Basically, for most of the common libraries you use in Python, there is a recommended or established way to import the libraries. For example, each and every time you would see a code snippet using the massplot library or the numpy library, you would probably see a statement like this. Everybody that uses numpy would usually import it import numpy as np. 
So our recommendation is use the established way to import libraries. If you just import one library, it's usually okay to import the whole library. If you import multiple libraries, you might get in a situation where you get naming conflicts and therefore you just choose the established way, which you can usually find in code snippets or in the documentation of a library. So let's go back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? In this unit, you have seen how to import libraries into your program. And you have seen how to avoid conflicts using namespaces. Thanks for watching and see you in one of the next units.